Good morning. I hope everybody got rest after the tumultuous evening last night. I like the word tumultuous. Jack, do you like the word tumultuous? I do like that word. What does it mean? <laughs> I use a, it means turmoil. So did you do you think there was turmoil last night? I would have to guess that you got quite a few text messages. I well, I'll talk about that, but I think uh, Kruger was a common swear word last night. Maybe that, that's a possibility. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, what I want to know right now is why aren't you working? Oh, I know why. I'm going to go talk about that. That's good. I was looking forward to that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I do not like it when I hook it up to my computer. At least today I remember to put on my mask. And I got some people that are taking the ACT today. Don't juniors take ACT or is that, is that done with? Yeah, we can take them. You know, Jack, when what? I when I uh, went to Bemidji State, I didn't have to take any test. Can I say something to Jacob real quick? Yeah, Jacob who? Jacob Peters. I don't know if he's on here yet. He's not on here yet. Well, when he gets on, we ask him how I was losing to Dane last night. Losing to who? Ben. In what? Ben. Oh, he's not a Packer backer. No. Oh. He's not he a. He wasn't very happy. Oh, he's in now. Should I ask him? Jacob Peters, how are you doing? doing pretty good was last night a tough night yeah you're not a packer backer huh nope you have a friend here who's very concerned about your health and well-being he wants to say hi hi noah <laughs> plus you guys were doing the assignment from he double toothpicks Howdy, ma'am. How are you? I got to take roll, so I can't get too far here. So I'm going to unplug this. I'll plug it back in. What was the book you had to read? Do you like it? Yes. I call it. It's a it's a different type of writing, isn't it? It's is it the older style of writing? Yeah, it's those there was one summer where all I did was read different stuff like from Ben Franklin, you know, all these people from England. And it's the hardest read I ever, ever had because the style is so different. And I like the plot of the Scarlet Letter, but it's a difficult thing to read. It really is. And like, I just have to like read summaries and I'm like, oh yeah, that is what happened. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm glad there are movies. Yeah, there probably is. There probably is. I think oh, there's about the Easy A. What? There's a movie called like the Easy A that's about the Scarlet Letter. Yeah, it's fairly recent, isn't it? Yeah, it's super recent. Yeah. And then, of course, you can get, you know, back in the 60s, there were comic books of those. And so 
when we went on vacation up north, I'd always buy a slew of comic books and I bought uh, Moby Dick, which is a great book. I'm glad I read the comic book because the book is really huge. It's another great story, isn't it? Moby Dick, but the book's tough. Do you guys have to read Moby Dick? Who's she? Okay, tell her, tell her that I said, I want her to teach Zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance. <laughs> She'll know what I mean. If she doesn't, then I'll explain it to you. But you tell her that. Do you know what Zen is? A Zen, yeah, the person that wrote it became a Zen Buddhist. So it's really about, yeah, it's, it's one of those books that's not a quick read. All right, I'm gonna take roll. Cole, you're here. Haley. Okay, uh, Heidi's here and Heidi closed the door. Morgan is here, Ella is here. Uh, Noah is here, Bryn is here. Bryn, Monet? Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. Or does your dad pronounce it Monette? God, Monet, I love that. Uh, Gus, Zach, I got you on now. Did I forget to get you on yesterday? Oh, well, no, I just haven't. I'm usually in class on these days. Yeah, I know. So, but did I? I didn't send you a link, did I, yesterday? I had someone forwarded to me, so that was good. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Hey, Kruger, there's some people in the waiting room that are waiting yeah. to get in. Oh, okay. I don't want them to come in. There's one person. All right, let me uh, get back to where I was. Um, so, Nick... And Olivia, I think is gone. I think she's taken a, the ACT. Noah is here. I just left him in. Dominic? Dominic? Ari? Uh, Ari? Here. Jack, I know. Bryce? Here. Jake, Ari harassed. Darcy? Here. Cora? Here. And I've already seen uh, Kaya. So um, I need everybody's attention. I was busy last night. As you were busy last night, trying to answer your questions. So um, let me, I got a couple of things to say. First of all, uh, let me share my screen with these people. Where is it? Yeah, it's this. And let me plug this in. I don't want this. Oh, well, let's see if I can share that again. I don't know if it's the way I want it to be. Oh, maybe I can't do them both. I bet I can't. All right, I'm gonna do this instead. Okay, you guys just see the uh, the L uh, G algebra, correct? Um, yes. Okay. All right, so I'm going to be toggling back and forth. So let me talk about this. First, I'm going to talk about my philosophy, okay? And I know I do that a lot in this class, but I am not the teacher, nor will I ever be the teacher that shows you how to do every problem. One, it's impossible. Secondly, my focus is uh, trying to get you to think and take risks, okay? And 
that's going to cause you some anguish because I know a lot of you guys are perfectionists and want it absolutely right. And uh, that wasn't the task of this particular uh, activity. Um, so let me go through that. Uh, what else do I want to say about? Because what's going to happen is you're going to get an AP test and I don't know what, I know what the question will be about, but I don't know what the question. And so, so I got to prepare you in that one, I got to give you as many ex experiences where you can think independently. All right. And this was one of those activities. So uh, I got to get rid of this. So what I have you have here is I have this function. I think the first thing I ask you to do is a negative X squared. Is that correct? And I think in the video, I did show you how to change this, correct? So you double click on it and I come over here and I type in a negative X squared and I hit apply or I say, okay. All right, let me get rid of that. God, it's messy, it's terrible. Let me minimize that. You see, my screen is like this, it's terrible. So I also have to change A, correct? And if I think I look at that, it says on the table two negative four. Can I move you now or what? What do you, can I get over here? Can I slide? Oh, I didn't want to do that. God, my screen is terrible. Sorry about this. So I'm going to click on, what was it, A? And all you have to do is make this negative 2. And this computes the Y. So I'm going to type in negative 2. And there's the graph that I'm looking for. Okay? And most of you were pretty okay about that. I got to get H down here. I need these slopes down here. So I'm dragging them where I can see them. Move this up. And then what caused a lot of, and I know I use words, but angst is frustration. And I like the word angst just because I think it's a cool word. But it did. It caused you a lot of frustration of what do you want for X? Well, I don't care. And the reason I don't care, and I'll show you how you could see X if you choose to. But I know I'm moving... As I decrease H, I'm getting closer to a negative 2. Would you agree? Because here you could see a negative 2, and I'm coming this way, and I'm coming that. So I wish I could share this. Maybe I can. I just put in, oh, it's 2 I'm going to, not a negative 2. Did I type in a negative two for A by mistake? And wanted two, didn't I? There we go. And I'm just gonna put in 1.9, 1 1.999. Those are close, correct? What are not close is a negative one, zero and one not in calculus they got to be tiny now i know when h gets smaller and smaller i'm getting closer to those numbers correct all right so i'm going to pretend that in these columns i have those x's but then i'm going to type in these slopes as i make it smaller everybody have that for some reason i can't see the columns that you're typing in yeah i know because my i'll show you the columns and it's not um 
it's because uh, Zoom does not allow me to show you both of those. So I'm going to show you the columns. Can you see it now? Yeah, I see it now. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just putting in the numbers and then here I would put in 2.001, 2.01, and 2.1. And the it's an idea that I want you to understand is as you approach two, you're getting these numbers here, these decimal portions, those are H. That's how far two, this is how far this X value is away from two. Does everybody understand that? And I know that's not, I mean, you really, if you, when you run the thing, you don't know that, but I, it's kind of a big picture idea because you're approaching, well, the differences between the two are getting smaller and smaller. I think in here, people were okay putting in the slopes. And some people didn't put it in the bottom. Some people just put it in the top. That was fine. I wanted you to see that you're approaching a negative four. What in the heck just happened? What is this? I don't know. So I need to see a negative four down there. Does that make sense? So as I go to this next one, I could put in a negative 1.99, a negative 1. Uh, negative 1.999, negative 1.99, negative 1.9, correct? What values would be to the right? What values would be the left? And then manipulate those and come up with slopes. Now, if you did this one, you should have came up with a positive four. On this one, it's the same type of thing. I would put in uh, 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.99. Everybody have the idea now? Um, the one that I was most concerned with was the absolute value, correct? It didn't matter what you put in for these numbers. One of these was a negative one. And the other one was always a positive one, correct? They never changed, did they? So when you come, there was, unlike these other ones that were starting to get close to a negative four, that were getting close to one, that were getting close to a negative 0.7, which a lot of you wrote down, this one never changed and was always constant. We're going to talk about that today. So the slope here did not exist for the absolute value. Okay. So you'll see your, I was pretty lenient. I mean, you did pretty well on it. But do you kind of understand where I was coming from on that? Jack, do you kind of understand where I'm coming on that? Yeah, no, I get it. Okay. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing that. And uh, what I'm going to do tomorrow, I'm going to talk about um, the other activity, the, the worksheet you had to type in that asked for the definition of a derivative and then the limit definition and so on. Okay, I'm not gonna talk about that today. Everybody cool with that? All right. Okay, so let me unplug this. Let me turn this on. Let me get rid of this. Uh, let me get rid of this. All right, so I'm gonna, you, we're gonna start with the notes then. Let's try this again.
Ari, you see this okay? Yes. All righty. So I'm trying to keep the two classes straight. Did we do any? We did this one, correct? Right? That's my walking with Rosie, correct? And I drew a graph. Did we do this one? Okay. Did we finish everything? And we did this one here? So there's nothing on this to do. Is that correct? All righty. So recapping where we're at. We are saying finding, I do not like this pen. I don't even know why I keep it. I will. Finding the slope of a tangent line. We have two methods. One, we take the limit as x approaches c of f of x minus f of c over x minus c. Correct? This, did I talk about f prime? Okay, f prime means it's saying find the slope of the tangent line when x is equal to this number. When x is equal to c, whatever that number is. When do we do this? When we know x which I mean C, or have a point, C comma F of C. I'm gonna write this. Is this notation, is this understandable? Bryce, does that make sense? Yep. Okay. So the other one is the limit, and I'm going to use delta x here, but feel free to put in h if you want to. That's headed towards zero, and this is f of x plus delta x. Minus f of x over delta x. And what does that give us? That gives us f prime of x. Oh, by the way, this is a number. And this is a formula. And this is uh, when we don't know x. or have a point. If you understand that, you're in great shape. And the other thing is when I talk about the slope of this tangent line, I either can call it a derivative, which I will do 90% of the time, or instantaneous rate. Right, that's in the capsule what we talked about yesterday. Would everybody agree? All right, so let's take a look at this. Don't know a point, do I? It wants to know what f prime of x is. So I'm gonna use the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h, correct? Now, when this, if I put three in here, Cole, f of three, what would it equal? f of four, f of nine, 
f of pi, f of x plus h. No matter what I put in there is a seven, correct? So I'm going to have, oops, I don't want that. So I'm going to write this as the limit as h goes to zero of seven minus seven over h. Now, h cannot be zero. In fact, h is approaching zero. It could be 0.1, it can be 0 0.01, it can be 0 0.000001. It cannot be zero. That's why we go through all that effort to simplify and cancel it out, correct? But zero divided by any number but zero is going to be zero. Which makes sense because this is a horizontal line. Here's the x-axis, here's the y-axis, here's seven. Here's my tangent line. My tangent line is going to coincide with that line because there's no curvature, correct? And since the blue line has a slope of zero, this has a slope of zero. Now, I'm going to say this. Right here, I'm going to write f prime of x equals zero. And I'm going to do something a little funky. I don't know. Does anybody use the word funky? It's a late 67, 68 term. Does anybody use that anymore? Haley, have you ever heard that before? This can be written as x to the zero power, correct? Right, because x to the zero power is one, seven times one. Now, why would I do that? Because we're going to be un as unhappy as we were last night. Okay, and I'm not minimizing that. Okay, you're going to be extremely happy, hopefully, in a few minutes. So now I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to have the limit as, I'll use h again, h of, wow, I'm going to have h in the bottom here. Bro, I already picked on Bryce. Darcy, if I put three in here, what would I get as an answer? Three. If I put seven here, what would I get as an answer? Seven. If I put a negative two in here, what would I get for an answer? Negative two. If I put X plus H in there, what would I get? X plus H. So it's gonna be X plus H minus X. Would you guys agree with that? So this gives me, well, what happens here? Bam, bam, I get H over H, correct? Right? Right, Ella? And it's not zero. It's headed to zero, but it's not zero. It's like 0 0.1 over 0 0.1, 0.01 0 .01 over 0 0.01. It's one, isn't it? So, Ella, what's the limit as H approaches zero of one? Will one ever change? So I got a horizontal line, correct? I move in, H is getting tinier and tinier. I keep going up, going up, and I hit a ceiling, and that ceiling is one. Perfect, it's one. So my derivative here, now, I'm gonna write a one right here. And Noah, I'm gonna ask you a hard, Noah, Jensen, I'm going to ask you a hard question. Okay. What's the coefficient in front of this X? One. That was my hard question. Okay. This one is going to be the limit as H goes to zero. I'm going to plug in X plus H. I'm going to square it. I'm going to subtract X squared over H. I'm hoping we're okay with that. 
that this is my input and this is what I'm going to square. Heidi. Can you square that for me? Can I write as 2xh? Okay. Plus minus x squared, right? Over h. And of course, I got bam, bam, correct. I could factor out an h. I got 2x plus h over h. Bam. And now I'm going to take the limit as h goes to 0 of 2x plus h. I don't have division by 0, do I? So, Nick, that means I can substitute 0 in for h, correct? And I'm left with what? 2x. So, this is going to be 2x. My derivative is going to be 2x. Let's back up a little bit. Noah McDonald. Here my function was 7x to the 0 power, and the derivative is 0. Here, I had 1x to the first, and my derivative is 1. Here I have x squared. Ooh, I can write a 1 here, can't I? Right? Noah McDonald, do you see a shortcut? Yeah, it looks like the leading coefficient, it, it goes like uh, 1, 2, right? You think you know what it would be for here? Uh, three. Three x. Do you know the exponent? To the f first, I think. No, not the first. The second is squared. Would be the second. Yeah. Okay, you are correct. I'm going to ask you a harder question. Are you ready for it? What if I had my function being 4x cubed? What would my derivative be? Would it be 12x squared? It's exactly 12x squared. Gus, do you see where he got 12? Four times three. Do you see how he got, what did he do to get a two? Yeah, he subtracted one. Okay, Gus, I'm going to give you one. You ready? You ready? You remember in elementary school when you learned to multiply and subtract? We're going back there now. Okay. Are you afraid of the number nine? Are you afraid of the number eight? I was when I was in elementary school. I didn't like those two. Because I struggled with that multiplication fact. What do you think the derivative is? You are absolutely correct. Does everybody see why you should be happy right now? Isn't that awesome? That's a great shortcut. Multiply, and how much do you subtract? Just one. You just got to go one back. Isn't that nice? Zach Kozlowski, how are you doing? I'm doing good. 
Are you, did you see that pattern? I did, yes. Okay, let's take a look at this one because we're stepping out of Kansas and headed towards Oz. How would you do that one? Um, would it be? You gotta speak loud. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. So that would be like x to the one half power, right? Uh, so no, it's not x to the one half. Only when you have radical signs would you. This is x to the one half. Well then. This is x to something else. Let's see. That'd be, so this one is half. why you need to know your exponential rules. Oh, you're right. Um, it is x to some power, though. So that's the first thing you want to do is get x to figure out what the power is. Let's see. So it would be. What would be. Um, it's kind of like this one, but yeah. opposite. That's a hint because it's in an opposite location. So we use a different symbol to represent opposite. So div division? Negative one, because negative one means this, this is X to the first. Okay. And when I take it out of the denominator, I write the exponent as negative. I see. Okay. okay. So the first thing is you got to rewrite F of X. So it looks like this. Okay. Now, I asked Noah up here what the leading coefficient is. Sometimes I forget, I write the one there. Mm -hmm. But that should be an easy multiplication problem for you. Yeah. So what is it? Uh, negative one. Negative one x to what power? Zero, well, negative two. No, 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 you're subtracting one. Yeah, negative two. Yeah, you're going backwards, right? Mm-hmm. So your answer here is the negative one over x squared. Gotcha. Okay. Bryn, rewrite f for me. x to the one half. Okay. That means f prime of x, our derivative is equal to what? Perfect. When you subtract one from a half, you get negative one half. Can you see that okay? Just tell me to raise it up. Okay, because Nick is tall. Okay. Now imagine, imagine having Hunter Farnick, Josh Schlow, and uh, who's the other person? Uh, Carter Kiki in front of you. And then you have to look around them. Okay, and they always want to sit up front. So, you see where this is going to be this, Bryn? Mm -hmm. Because this negative one half means this needs to be in the denominator. The one half indicates square root. And you're okay that that two is already in the denominator, so it stays in the denominator. Everybody all right on that? Well, there's a one right here. And one half times one is one half. This exponent indicates what you're doing to so x. To no, 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 no. You're done. Once you multiply, just, just multiply, just multiply, get done with it, and subtract one. And remember, subtract one is going backwards one, right? Are we okay? Yeah. Christian. We're going to rewrite f of x. x to what power? Okay, square root. When we had square root before, it was a half. So it's still a half, okay? But now it's in the opposite location. So what symbol do we use for opposite? Right, so it's going to be a negative one half. Uh, only after I subtracted one. Or I didn't subtract one. Bryn subtracted the one. I didn't. So all, we haven't taken the derivative yet, folks. This is not taking the derivative. 
No way did I multiply. No way did I subtract, or at least Christian hasn't. I'm just rewriting to know what to multiply and know what to subtract one from. Does everybody got that? All right. What is my derivative? Now, remember, Christian, there's a one out here, correct? So what is my derivative? You're going to multiply this exponent times that coefficient. Perfect, negative one half. And then x is going to have a new exponent. You have to subtract one from a negative one half. Perfect, perfect. And so this is going to be negative one over two, there's negative one half, do you see it? Square root is the half part, x cubed. That's how I write it. The reason I write it that way, Noah, is somewhere down the line, we may want to know what the slope is. And if I have to plug in a 3, then I cube 3 and I take the square root. Or I just write the cube root of, uh, or the square, excuse me, I cube 3 and I write the square root of 27. I don't even have to simplify. You understand what I mean? I don't go through that mess to do that. Kaya. Notice I forgot my f here. I don't know what was happening. f of x. Rewrite it so x, you know the exponent of x. x to what power, Kaya? One half. Well, Not a there's no square root symbols, no radicals. Oh, is it negative two? It's a negative two. Now, unfortunately, I don't reteach you exponents. If you have this, that's x to the one third. Does everybody understand that? If I have this, this, by the way, is called an index. Do they tell you that? That's your denominator of your fraction. And if I have this, this is x to the 7 fifths. I wish, I have written to the gods of mathematics and say, I wish we wrote a 2 there for the square root of x. But we don't. I wish we did. When it's in the denominator, it's negative. All exponents. So now, Kaya, remember there's a one out here, correct? What am I going to get for the derivative? You got to multiply and then subtract one. Negative 2x to the negative third. Perfect. Which can be rewritten as this. All right. Now, who am I going to? Jack, I haven't picked on you yet. Yep. You ready? There is no number nine. I'm making it up just as I'm thinking right now. This is going to be called A. A is just the coefficient, OK? OK. This is N. So this is some constant. This is some constant. OK. The derivative of this would be what? A n or a yeah a n x n minus one. Correct. So you're going to multiply these two, correct? Yep. One. This is called the power rule. These little exponents are called powers. Okay. Yep. If you understand that, life is going to get good really quickly.
All right, so here I'm going to write, and I'm just going to go right down the road. Ari, you're going to start. F of x equals this. So this is f of x is equal to x to what power? Ari. Yeah, I have to find it. I think. It's a fraction. Um. And the reason I know it's a fraction, it's got this little doohickey called a radical. Yeah. Would it be one half x to the negative? Well, you're starting to take the derivative. I just want you to rewrite this so you know what the power is. Oh. That's all I want you to do. Um, the first part of the assignment in the book. Okay, 1x to the 3 over 2. You want me to put a 1 here? I could do that. So now what's the derivative? Um, now it's uh, 3 over 2x to the um, negative 3 over 2. Well, you're going to subtract 1 from 3 halves. To the one over two. One half. Okay. Um, Bryce. X to what power? Um, X to the one half. No. Look at this. Maybe you can't read my handwriting. Let me make it bigger. That's oh, it's seven. Um, seven. X to the one seven. People, my handwriting is so terrible, you can't even see my seven. Sorry. Is that better? Sure. Yeah. Everybody in here is throwing stuff at me. You guys can't see it, but Noah Jensen just hit me with a tomato. Okay, go ahead. X to the one seven. No. Or negative seven. Well, it's not the same. It's a negative seven. If there is no radical, there is no fraction. No radical. You guys know what I mean by a radical? This is what a radical looks like. Something like that. And there's a number here. This is equal to x to the 1 over n. If you don't see it, there's no fraction. All right. Bryce, what is this? Um, negative seven x minus or to the negative eight. Perfect. Okay, uh, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. I'm not giving myself room. I'm jumping to five. F of x equals three over the cube root of x. And Darcy. Right here at five. Tell me what F is. Does it have a coefficient? Darcy, does it have a coefficient? Are you calling my name, Kruger? Didn't I say Darcy? You're kind of cutting out. Oh, yeah, Darcy. Can you hear me? Is that better? I'm leaning back. I'm like, I'm can you see me? Yeah. Okay. Do you see this? Yeah. Okay. You want to give it to me on power form? I can't, I can't understand you. Okay. You can't understand what I'm saying? Am I cutting out? Jacob, somebody is asked if you could hear me i think it might just be her wi-fi or something like that because i can hear you yeah i can hear you too 
Okay, Jacob, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, somebody requested that you answer this. Okay. And his initials are NJ, but I won't, you, won't tell you his name. Okay. Yeah. So you can thank him appropriately. At a, All right. Okay, what are you going to have me write here? Uh, would it be 3X to the 1 over 6? Uh, that's a 3 right here. Oh, 1 over 3? Okay, positive or negative? Negative. Okay, so the derivative is what? You're going to have to ne multiply and subtract. Negative x to the negative one and one third. Yeah, you know what? You're right, but we always leave it as an improper fraction. Okay. Okay. And you're right, but you'll find out all that time we had you guys do changing improper fractions into mixed numbers are really a waste of time. Thank you. It's like they, I tell those people, God, quit hammering on how. All righty, let's go to this one. I'm going to skip the rest of them. Okay, so it says the constant rule. If your function is a constant, the derivative is zero. Automatically. So if I give you this on a quiz. My God, what is happening here? Darcy wants to be back in here. She must have got kicked out. Okay. The derivative is what, Dominic? Um, three. No. This is a constant. It says the derivative of a constant function f of x equals c then the derivative is zero. Zero. I should write x here, not c. Zero is your answer. Power rule. I'm going to write down what Jack told me. If I have this, because you you know here the coefficient is one, but it can be any coefficient. X to the nth. Then the derivative is going to be a times n x to the n minus one. Morgan, we've done this one already. What's the derivative? Well, there's a one right here and there's a one right here. So what's one times one? And then you're gonna subtract one from one. What do you get? What is X to the zero? One. One times one is one. Okay. Uh, this one, uh, Bryn, X to the fourth. Now notice I, don't, I write it in a different form because it might ask it as this form, okay? So dy dx is asking the same thing as f prime of x. What are we going to get? 4x to the third. Next page. Find the slope of the tangent using this. So I'm going to figure out the derivative. But before I figure out the derivative, Gus, I have to write f as x to what power? Three over five. Perfect. So its derivative is what? negative two fifths. Correct. Perfect. Perfect. Now, my slope, my slope, if I plug in two into the derivative, the purpose of the derivative is to give the slope of the tangent line. 
The purpose of the derivative is to give you the slope of the tangent line. So if I plug in two, I'm going to have three fifths and two times two to the negative two fifths power, which you could do on your calculator, right? Right? If I plug in negative one in there, it's going to be three fifths times a negative one, I guess I'll put in parentheses, to the negative two fifths power. Well, the fifth root of a negative one is a negative one and you're going to square it, it's going to be one. You'll find out on your calculator it's three fifths. And if I want to know at x equals four, I'm going to plug in four and I'm going to get three fifths times four to the negative two fifths, whatever that is on your calculator, rounded to three decimal points, correct? At least three. You can go more, you just can't go less. We doing okay? Now, Ella, we're shaking it up. It says, find the equation of a tangent line. This is the second day in a row. What two things do you need to know to have an equation of a line? Point and a slope, okay? What do you want us to figure out first? The point or the slope? You get to decide. You have all the power. This is your baby. The point. Okay, I got X, right? I have to figure out Y, correct? So I know my point is a negative two comma something. Where do I find my Y? Right here is F of X. So I'm gonna put into F a negative two, correct? What do I get? Negative eight. So my point is negative two comma negative eight. Would you agree? So we got half of it done. Now I need to figure out my slope. How am I going to do that? Yeah, what's my slope formula? Excuse me, my derivative, not my slope formula, my derivative. Purpose of the derivative is to give you the slope of the tangent line. I didn't hear what you said. Yeah, yeah. So what is my derivative formula? No, 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 I told you f of x equals x cubed. What? You gotta take the derivative of x cubed. Yeah, perfect. Three x to the second, correct? Right, everybody see that? This is what I'm going to use to get my slope. This is what I use to get my y. So this is going to become, now what you're gonna plug in there is this negative two, Ella, because that's my c. So you gotta square negative two and then multiply it by three, 12. So now I'm gonna come up with the equation of my tangent line. It's going to be, it's going to be 12 X minus what? X minus what? Here's my point. Here's my point. What's my X value? Is it a negative two? Did you say a negative two? Okay, I didn't hear you. Minus my y value. What's my y value? Negative eight, which you're probably gonna write as 12 times x plus two plus eight. Oh, this was wrong. This should have been plus a negative eight. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. It should have been plus y. Now, 
Here's the general form of a tangent line. Where did Ella get 12 from the derivative, correct? What did she plug into the derivative? She plugged in C. So this is going to be F prime of C. That gave me 12. C was a negative 2 in this case. Then it's X minus C plus. Where did she get the negative 8? Well, she put that negative 2 into F. F of C. That's our revised point slope form because we get the slope from this. We get our y value from this. You got this right here, this notation. Y sub t is saying this is a a line that's a tangent line, and this is the equation. There's nothing to do here. I'm just saying, hey, this is a special line. It's a tangent line. OK. All right, let's take a look at this. So I have y here. And Jack O'Brien, how am I going to rewrite y so I could take its derivative? Uh, so it'd be y equals and then 5x. Would it be like? Negative what? Over. Oh, negative 5? No. Nope. What's the exponent down here? It's a 1, isn't it? 1, so it'd be negative 1. Negative 1. So y prime is another way to say the derivative is going to be what, Jack? Uh, negative 5x minus, or yeah, minus 2. Which is the like, same as negative 5 over x squared. OK, f of t can be written how, Cora Welch? 2 times t to what power? Um, two times t to the um, one half power. Almost negative one half. Do you see why it's a negative one half? Yeah, because it's in the denominator. Correct. So the derivative is equal to what? Um, negative one. You got to go backwards one from a negative one half. Sometimes I think of a number line. I got to go left one unit from a negative one half. Where's that put me? Negative one and a half. Right. Give me the improper fraction. Negative three over two. Perfect. 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 Which is the same as a negative one over t of the three halves. This is the same as y equals 7 sixteenths x to the fifth. Have you guys ever seen that these are the same? So my coefficient is 7 sixteenths. I think it's easier to write it that way, Haley. Haley, I never call on you. Do you notice that? Does it bother you? Not really. In fact, it probably makes you feel good. Are you OK with that, Haley? OK, Haley. I've only thought like 16 times I'm going to call on Haley and then I go somewhere else. So what are you going to get when you take 5 times 7 sixteenths? Yeah, you did that quick. X to what power? I think you said 4. Okay. Darcy, can you hear me better now? Yeah. Okay. So this is the same as y equals one third x. Do you see how I got one third, Darcy? Yeah. 
was x to what power? x to the negative fourth. Perfect, perfect. So dy dx, which is another way to write derivative, is what? Negative 4 over 3x to the negative fifth. Perfect. And it may be written this way. Because there's my negative 4 thirds. There's my negative fifth. Are you guys comfortable with me doing this so fast, moving the denominator in the opposite direction? Don't they teach you exponents like in advanced algebra? Okay, okay. All right, Noah, I got a whole list here. Noah Jensen, okay? So you're gonna take the derivative of each of these separately, okay? So the first thing is what's the derivative of x to the fourth? Yeah, there's a coefficient in front. Yeah, but it got multiplied by four. Right? Yeah. So it's what? There's four a the perfect four X to the third. Okay. Now there's a one right here, right? And so you're going to take one and times a negative three. What are you going to get? And then this is going to become X to the zero, right? Which is the same as one. So now you're done here, aren't you? Yes. Now you're going to take the derivative of seven, which is, it's a constant. Derivative of all constants is what number? New. Zero. zero. So you're done. Unless you want me to write plus zero. Everybody cool on that? Gus, this one's going to become this. Well, I'm going to let you do this. G prime, this first term. X to what power, got, uh, Gus? Yeah, you find the derivative. So you're going to do this first term first. So it's going to be X to what power? Just ignore all these other terms. Just work on this one. Yep, it's a negative two because you're gonna have a six divided by a negative three, correct? Yes. And then X is gonna have what power? Perfect. And now you move to this one. And so now you're taking the derivative of four X squared. What's that gonna be? Perfect. Now you're gonna take the derivative of X. What's that gonna be? Perfect. Now you're gonna take the derivative of a negative 11. What's that gonna be? And I don't write that down. Everybody got that? Okay, next page. Okay, these are not power functions. These are trig functions. Okay, these are trig functions. I'm gonna show you something, so be patient with me. Alrighty, let's uh, go to this. I gotta go to these people. Stop sharing this. I'm gonna share this. And then I'm gonna plug this in. I'm gonna turn this off, plug this in. Uh, 
Uh, Jack, do you, did you do you see that graph? Yeah, I can see the graph. You guys can't see the graph. Come on, let's go faster than slow. Okay, so you guys can see this graph, correct? That's the sine curve. Okay, I don't like the color red. I'm gonna make it black. So there's the sine curve. I'm gonna slide it here. All right, then what I'm gonna do, what I like about Desmos, Oops. I'm going to graph the derivative. Y prime. Okay, right? That's the symbol. Oh, you're not going to let me do that. Uh, let's do this. Take the derivative of sine. Will you do that for me? Oh, and you'll do it in purple? You're very nice. So let's take a, oh, I don't want that either. That's not right. Okay, let's try this. Try that. Yep, perfect. So it's still in purple. So sine curve, correct? This looks almost like the sine curve, but it's been shifted, right? Last year was shifted 90 degrees, correct? That is the cosine. So the derivative of sine is the cosine. Do they tell you that co means it's been shifted 90 degrees? Did Mr. Karsh tell you that? So tangent and cotangent are the same function. Cotangent's just been shifted 90 degrees. Secant and cosecant are the same function Cosecant's just been shifted 90 degrees. Okay, just slid. And you can see how this one has been slid, correct? All right, so now I'm going to come back. Oops. Come on. And I'm going to change it. And I'm going to change this. The cosine. Oops. So here's my cosine function, right? Now this one looks like sine, except it's going in the opposite direction, right? Sine should be going up, but it's going down. It's going the opposite direction. In math, we use a negative sign to indicate opposite. So the derivative of cosine is a negative sign. Ella, when I started taking calculus, I was a freshman in college. When I was a freshman in college, my hair started to fall out. Hence, calculus causes your hair to fall out. And I've been doing it for a number of years and now I have no hair. And it's primarily because I had to remember the derivative of sine is cosine and the derivative of cosine isn't sine, it should be, it'd be really cool if it was. No, it's negative sine, okay? So tomorrow I have a few things to go over. This is what I think I'm going to do there's going to be another change. And I'm sorry about this, but we're not going to have the quiz Thursday. I'm moving the quiz to Friday. Oh. So I hate to disappoint you. 
but I want to, I have a feeling one, I stress the bejeebers out of everybody and I apologize that, but I hate to tell you this, that's going to be rather usual. Yeah, I'll be a normal thing. Okay. You'll say Kruger stress, same thing. Okay. In fact, in fact, if you're ever having a bad day for any reason, like you're getting a car accident, uh, your dog urinates on some clothes, uh, you, you lose a younger sibling for a couple of days, okay? Just blame it on me, okay? Just say, I'm having a Kruger day, okay? And then that won't make it any better, but you'll have somebody to blame, okay? We'll see you guys. See everybody that was in the abyss.